Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the second lecture on the same topic, that is the bacterial infections. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss various streptococcus and staphylococcal infections. The inflammatory diseases of the hair follicles. Both coagulase positive staph aureus and coagulase negative staph as well as physical and chemical, chemical irritants are the most common causes of superficial folliculitis. Other microbial causes of uh, folliculitis include Pseudomonas aeruginosa, gram-negative folliculitis, Petrisosporum folliculitis, itchy folliculitis of HIV, and pseudofolliculitis due to ingrown hairs. Other type of folliculitis which are covered here include psychosis barbie, folliculitis keloidalis, acne necrotica, perforating folliculitis, actinic folliculitis, disseminated and recurrent infundibular folliculitis, eosinophilic vascular folliculitis, suppurative hydroadenitis, and perifolliculitis capitis and folliculitis D. calvins. Folliculitis also occur beneath the adhesive plaster paste and falling epilation, um, a traumatic folliculitis develops. Superficial folliculitis. The inflammatory changes that are confined to the ostium or extend only slightly below it is called as superficial folliculitis and it heals without a scar formation. Superficial folliculitis is not always primarily or exclusively infective in origin. So physical and chemical injury to the skin may be associated with pustules which may be sterile. So occupational contact with mineral oil or tar products can produce such lesions. In oil folliculitis, there is conspicuous oil plugging of many follicles. Comedon-like structures may also be seen. The staphylococcal or staphylococcus aureus superficial folliculitis is also known as the follicular impetigo of Bukhart, is an infection of follicular ostium. Use of topical Corticosteroid, especially of strong grades, is usually a predisposing factor. The individual lesion is a doomed yellow pustule, sometimes with a narrow red areola. The pustule develops in crops and may heal within 7 to 10 days, but sometimes become chronic. So this is how the superficial folliculitis look like. There are many... Um, small pus filled lesions called as the pustules, and some of them they are surrounded by red areola as well. Chronic folliculitis of the legs. This is seen mainly in the young adult males in subcontinent. There is a profuse eruption of superficial and deep follicular pustules on the thigh and lower legs that are persistent for many years and resistant to many treatments. The staph aureus is the common cause. No systemic abnormality can be detected. A slightly aggravated form of chronic folliculitis of the leg is the pustular dermatitis atrophicans of the legs. This occur predominantly in black males on anterior tibial surface, sometimes thighs, and characterized by miliary pustules, which are followed by atrophic scars. So this is how a chronic bacterial folliculitis on the leg look like. There are many um, sterile, there are many pustular lesions along with the papular lesions, and the history is uh, prolonged, chronic and there is a, a long treatment history 
but none of the treatment is effective. So differential diagnosis of folliculitis include pustular miliaria. The difference from pustular miliaria is that the pustular miliaria is not folliculocentric. Since pustular miliaria is an infection of the sweat coils, so it is perifollicular. Then subcorneal pustular dermatosis is characterized by large pustules and infective ringworm. Usually the pustules are seen in annular configuration. Treatment, mild staph folliculitis is self-limiting or may respond to cleansing or topical antiseptics like biodine. In more severe cases, antibiotics, topical or systemic may be required. If infection is persistent or recurrent, the usual site of staph carriage should be sought in patients and his or, patient and his or her contacts. And the usually two sites are seen, the nares and the perianal area. Hand washing is the single most, uh, most important behavioral modifi modification in prevention of the spread. Pseudofolliculitis, also known as the pili in carnity or ingrown hairs. This is the inflammation that results from penetration into the skin of sharp tips of shaved hairs. Rather than moving out, the tips of the hairs move in the skin. If shaven too long, the hair may curve backwards after emerging, or if cut very short, they retract into the follicles. Curly hair are more liable to both these aberrations. Male beard is the most commonest site, and it is troublesome in mainly armed forces individuals where strict grooming standards demand very clean shaving. The clinical features, papules and pustules on shaven skin, no symmetric pattern. On close inspections, hair are seen superficially within the skin. The papules may be large and scarring, keloid formation or hyperpigmentation may ensue. The condition should be differentiated from D folliculitis, associated with fruncles and carbuncle, the tinea barbi and the acne. These are, you can see several ingrown hairs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this picture. So the only certain cure is to stop shaving for a minimum of four to six weeks and to allow the inflammation to settle. Brushing with toothbrush to release hair is less effective, but is a quicker way. Hair should be left about one millimeter long and plucking should be avoided. Some relief is possible with steroid antibiotic combination. Laser therapy is reported to be beneficial while physical extraction of the ingrown hairs is recommended, which is usually done by the needle of an insulin syringe. Frunkel or boil. Frunkel is an acute, usually necrotic, infection of the hair follicle with staph aureus. In adolescence, boys are affected more than the girls, and the peak incidence parallels that of acne vulgaris. The infecting strain of staph aureus is usually also present in the nares or perineum, which is the reason of the recurrence in those particular sites. From the site of carriage, the infection is disseminated by fingers and by clothing. Mechanical damage to the skin, even the friction of collar and belts, may determine the distribution of the lesions. Diabetes and HIV is widely believed to predispose to frunculosis. Clinical features. Start as follicular pustule, later on nodule and abscess is formed, and later on necrosis. Heal after discharge of necrotic core 
and pus to leave a permanent scar. Tenderness is invariable when the inflammation is acute. Upper lip and cheek. In upper lip and cheek, cavernous sinus thrombosis is rare but a dangerous complication. This is a fruncle. You can see a large borogi swelling which is tender to palpate and is having a surrounding erythema. So these uh, hand diagrams show the superficial folliculitis when the Pursue when the mm, neutrophilic infiltrate is limited only to the osteal portion of hair follicle or through in present in the epidermis. And here is the deep folliculitis when the neutrophils are seen throughout the hair follicle. Now, this is a frontal formation where there is a large bit of abscess seen within the dermis. A frontal is an abscess of the hair follicle followed by necrosis and destruction of the follicle. You can see a large abscess here and destruction of the hair follicle. A treatment. Each episode may need to be treated syst systemically with flucloxacillin or another penicillinase resistant antibiotics like penicillin, chevalonic acid, or first generation cephalosporin or bacrolides. Topical antibacterial agents reduce the contamination of surrounding the skin. Occlusive dressings should be avoided. It may be prudent to exclude diabetes and other possible underlying conditions in recurrent cases. Nasal and perineal carriage should be sought and treated. Carbuncle. Carbuncle is a deep infection of a group of contiguous follicles with staph aureus that is accompanied by intense inflammatory changes in surrounding and underlying connective tissue that include the subcutaneous fat. Carbuncles occur predominantly in men and usually in middle or old age. It is seen in apparently healthy, in presence of diabetes, malnutrition, cardiac failure, drug addiction or severe generalized dermatosis such as exfoliative dermatitis or pemphigus and during on prolonged steroid therapy. The term carbuncle is derived from the Latin word for a small fiery coal and describes the painful hard red lump. It is doom shaped and acutely tender. Within a few days, it reached a diameter of 5 to 10 centimeter or more. Separation begins after 5 to 7 days and pus is discharged from multiple orifices. Necrosis of intervening skin leaves a yellow slough. Most lesions on the back of the neck and shoulder or the hip and thighs. And although usually solitary, it can be multiple. Fever may be high, malaise and prostration may be extreme. The uneventful healing is slow and leave a scar. This is a fruncal and this is carbuncle where multiple contagious hair follicles are involved in large inflammation. This is how a carbuncle would look like a large boggy swelling with multiple pus points. Anthrax present the only important differential. And it is usually treated by uh, penicillinase-resistant antibiotics like flucloxacillin, penicillin, chevalonic acid, first-generation cephalosporins, or macrolides. Um, incision and drainage and surgical debridement is sometimes mandatory to treat a carbuncle. Psychosis. Psychosis is a subacute or chronic Pyogenic infection involving the whole depth of the follicle. So this is not acute, rather subacute or chronic. If follicles are destroyed with clinically evident scarring, the term of leupoid psychosis is used, or a cumbersome synonym, al erythema psychosiformi. Folliculitis decalvans is essentially the same process involving the scalp hairs.
Psychosis occur mostly in male after puberty and most commonly involve follicles, follicles of the beard area. Infecting organism, organism is staph aureus, but due to unknown reason, staph do not normally penetrate more deeply than the follicular osteum. Many patients are subric with greasy skin. Clinical feature. The essential lesion is an edematous red follicular papule or pustule centered on a hair. The perifollicular edema may coalesce to produce a raised plaque studded with pustules, which suggested the appearance of a ripe thick. Most chronic form, the lesions are typically clustered into a plaque, essentially on upper lip and chin, and persist for a very long period. So the classical appearance is that of a plaque with the um, uh, with pustules. There is often some crusting and scaling, but hairs are retained and there is no evidence of scarring. This is true for psychosis, which is a chronic folliculitis. You can see the large boggy swelling and pustular areas, multiple pustules. Chronic stage of psychosis bar. The lipoid psychosis follicles are destroyed by scarring and active papules and pustules fringe the advancing margin along a pink atrophic scar. The granulomatous inflammatory changes may give the papule a lipoid appearance. Scalp may be extensively involved and lipoid psychosis tend to persist indefinitely. So you can see the little bit of scarring along with chronic pustules in this patient. Treatment. Subacute forms are relatively easily controlled by antibiotic ointments, but tend to relapse when the application is stopped. The application must be continued indefinitely. In resistant cases, 10 to 14 days course of systemic antibiotics deserve a trial. The first line treatment is topical therapy with antibiotic plus steroid combination and considering the letting beard hair grow. Second line is Antibiotics such as flucloxacillin, cloxacillin, and erythromycin, or oloretinoids. Third line is laser hair removal and photodynamic therapy. Polyculitis keloidalis, which is also known as acne keloidalis. It's a chronic inflammatory process involving the hair follicles of the nape of the neck leads to hypertrophic scarring in papules and plaques. It occurs in males between the ages of 14 and 25, especially black. No specific organism is isolated, but staph aureus is often found. The friction of collar is often incriminated and association between frequently close hair cut, less than four weeks due to penetration of cut hairs into the skin is the cause. So one of the advice to the patient is not to apply a blade on the nape of the skin. Pathology, it includes a chronic perifollicular inflammation, disappearance of semaceous glands, destroyed follicles, lamellar fibroplasia, and acute inflammation around the degenerating follicular components. Follicular, the clinical features, the follicular papules and pustules, often an irregularly linear group, develop on the nape of the neck just below the hairline. The papules may remain discrete or fuse into horizontal bands or irregular plaques. The condition is extremely chronic and new lesions may continue to form at intervals for years. So these follicular papules later on coalesce to form thick hypertrophic scarring. The treatment, bacterial infection should be treated if present, avoidance of closely shaven hair on the back of the scalp, intralegional or topical potent corticosteroid reduce scarring and inflammation, cryotherapy can be used, Laser therapy followed by secondary intention healing. In general, medical treatment is disappointing 
an affected area may be excised and grafted or excised and allowed to heal by secondary intention. Surgery followed by radiotherapy is also advocated. Acne necrotica veriliformis. The term acne necrotica has included a chronic follicular necrotizing process which evolves into small round scars affecting mainly areas close to the scalp margin. And this is called as acne necrotica veriliformis. A milder disease occurred throughout the scalp without significant scarring is known as acne necrotica miliaris. This is regarded as possibly synonym for propionobacterium acne folliculitis of the scalp. Etiology, the acne necrotica veriliformis is much less common than acne necrotica miliaris. It occurs slightly more frequent in men than in women and is seen between ages of 30 and 50 and never before puberty. Lesion is essentially a folliculitis, but cause is uncertain. Most suggested pathogen is Staph aureus and Propionibacterium acri, but neither is universally accepted. The treatment appropriate for a Staph infection, however, it is usually disappointing. A response to tetracycline in keeping with primary role or Propionibacterium acne may be tried or may be found effective. The typical lesion of acne necrotica is a red papule often umbilicated and rapidly transformed by necrosis into an adherent hemorrhagic crust, which leaves a permanent veriliform scar. The most frequent site are the temples and anterior margin of the scalp, and much less frequent site is chest and back, cheek and nose. They may ultimately produce disfiguring scarring. See this um, necrotic papules at the margin of the scalp as well as in the beard. Acne necrotica miliaris is characterized by similar but less extensive lesions involving the whole scalp. Differential include papillonecrotic tubercletes. Acne necrotica miliaris described as petrasosporum acne folliculitis, the lesions are typically distributed throughout the scalp, are small and numerous, non-scarring and itchy. Treatment. Staph aureus is isolated and a course of appropriate antibiotic should be given and antiseptic shampoo may be advised. Otherwise, prolonged course of oral antibiotic for acne, for example, tetracycline is given, topical clindamycin is additionally recommended. Toxipin is suggested for both the psychotropic and antipyretic effect, and isotretinoin is used successfully in difficult cases. Perforating folliculitis is actually a perforating disorder, largely asymptomatic eruption of chronic follicular papules, mainly on the limbs of young adults. The follicles have centered necrotic, have a necrotic center showing perforation. Crateriform center. Histology, the follicles are dilated and plugged with keratin. The follicular epithelium shows one or more perforation into the dermis. Trunk folliculitis. It is a non-specific term characterized by papular and pustular folliculitis, follicular eruption of trunk in young and middle-aged adults. Lesions are few dozen, scattered over the upper trunk like Malassezia folliculitis, and myconazole hydrocortisone cream is ineffective. Comedones and facial acne is absent. No improvement with tetracycline, erythromycin, or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, in short or long courses. The response to UVB therapy is good, but in condition tend to relapse. Actinic folliculitis. In young or middle-aged adults of both sexes occur repeatedly within 24 hours of sun exposure resolved within 10 days. Mechanism unknown, sunscreen give partial protection, standard acne therapy is ineffective, and two facial cases respond to isotretinoin. Then disseminated and recurrent in fundibular folliculitis, an uncommon condition mainly affecting black people with widespread eruption of follicular papule and trunk sparing the flexures. 
So here the inflammation or infection is deep till the infundibulum portion of the hair follicle. Itching is often but usually is often but not always present. Course is chronic and recurrent. No infective agent is isolated. Vitamin A and isotretinoin is reported to help this condition. This is how the disseminated recundible and recurrent infundibulo folliculitis look like. Then eosinophilic pustular folliculitis or Ufuji's disease. Cases have been documented worldwide, male-female ratio 5, ratio 1, peak incidence, third decade, HIV association, an infantile, a malignancy associated or medication associated variety is also described. Report of disease being associated with contact dermatitis, fungal infection and mites. The follicles are heavily infiltrated with eosinophils and a necrotic with degeneration of outer root sheath. Blood eosinophilic count is raised. You can see the hair follicles are infiltrated by uh, eosinophilic pustules. Face is the commonest site and is the site of onset in most cases. Trunk and upper outer arm are frequently involved in 20%. The pustules of palm and sole simulating palmoplantar pustulosis. Group of papillo pustules distributed annually with frequent itching. Patients are system systemically well. Overall course is chronic with remission and recurrence. If associated with HIV, it may be associated with other immune dysfunctions. So you can see the lesions of eosinophilic pustulitis, folliculitis characterized by papules and pustules which are distributed in annular fashion. No treatment is effective. Systemic corticosteroids are usually but not always helpful and topical steroids are partially effective. Depsone work well in some cases, maybe drug of first choice. Other reported therapy include NSAIDs, minocycline, isotretinoin, itraconazole, citrazine, metronidazole, and colchicine. UVB therapy was helpful in six AIDS-associated cases. Interferon is used with some benefit, and topical pacrolimus and tacrolimus are also found helpful. Perifolliculitis capitans, absentees, at saphodians, or dissecting cellulitis of the scalp. This is a rare chronic separative disease of the scalp. Between ages of 18 and 40 and exclusively in men and more common in black men of African origin. Usually occurs alone, but occasionally associated with acne conglobata and separative hydradenitis, leading to suggestion that these three conditions have similar basic pathogenesis and that is obstruction of follicular ostia. The response of treatment with antibiotic is usually disappointing, suggesting that a granulomatous response to keratin has developed. An intense perifolliculitis destroys the follicle and chronic inflammatory infiltrate with clumps of foreign body giant cells extend widely into the dermis. The earliest lesions are firm tender nodule and hairs overlying the nodule are soon shed and easily extracted and follicular openings discharge pus. Nodules may coalesce to form roughly cerebriform ridges devoid of hairs on the summit but still hairy in the clefts that separate them. That is why it is called as absentees at saphodians. The hairs are absent at the, at the, at the um, convex surfaces. The nodules are, nodules are persistent for years before eventually healing to leave irregular scarring that may be keloidal. Fetal squamous cell carcinoma is also developed. You can see these scarring nodules and usually the hairs are seen in the trough areas. Diagnosis is kirion of the scalp and tufted folliculitis, which is associated with follicular pustules and papule, but no, not boggy abscess of dissecting cellulitis. The medical treatment of this condition is oral antibiotics, such as tetracycline or erythromycin, 
for their anti-inflammatory and antibacterial actions. Oral isotretinoin is worth trying. Oral corticosteroids, intra-regional corticosteroid injections, topical antiseptic cleansers, zinc sulfate 400 mg three times a day for 12 weeks, and biological agents such as tumor, anti-tumor necrotic factor alpha inhibitors, such as infleximab and adalimumab. Surgical treatment include incision and drainage of abscesses, surgical excision of the lesions, surgical resection and skin grafting, the laser epilation, carbon dioxide laser ablation, radiotherapy, and photodynamic therapy. The staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome. SSSS or tetra S is an exfoliative dermatosis in which most of the body surface become erythematous and necrotic and superficial epidermis strips off. First described in children known as the Ritter disease, but adults may be affected. Outbreaks of tetra S in nurseries and neonatal units are reported and spread from healthcare workers who are asymptomatic staff carriers. Factors such as renal failure, malignancy, immunosuppression, and alcohol abuse predispose the adults to the disease. The epidermal changes are produced by exfoliative toxins secreted by Staph aureus, and blood cultures are negative in children. Clinical features. The initial event is usually a localized staphylococcal infection. A few days later, patient develop fever, irritability, and skin tenderness. A widespread erythematous eruption follows, which progresses rapidly to blister formation. The tender skin become gathered into fold and leaves raw areas which are extremely painful. Condition usually heals within 7 to 14 days. Sobs and culture of blister fluid do not grow bacteria. This is how the peeling of skin occurs in tetra S. This is localized tetra S in adults. There is splitting of epidermis between the granular and spinous layer caused by one or more exfoliative toxin A and B. which are shown to cause disruption of desmosomes by cleaving the desmogline 1. The same toxins are involved in bullous impetigo that may be regarded as a localized form of tetras. Management. The prognosis is good in children. If antibiotics are administered early, mortality rate is low. First-line antibiotics is flucloxacillin, clarithromycin, clindamycin, tamoxylin, uh, tegacycline and deptomycin. And first line treatment if MRSA is suspected, vancomycin or topramycin. Toxic shock syndrome. A fever, a rash followed in one to three weeks by descommission, circulating shock, and multi system disease characterize this syndrome which is mediated by one or more toxins elaborated by Staph aureus. Nearly all cases have been infected with Staph aureus at any site, at any age, and in either sex may cause toxic shock syndrome. However, most of the early cases, the organisms were isolated from vagina of menstruating women using, facilitated in some way by the tampoons. Avoidance of these materials in tampoons, these were the homemade tampoons, was followed by dramatic fall in the incidence. Toxic shock syndrome toxin, TSST1, previously identified as staphylococcal enterotoxin F or pyogenic exotoxin C. Although it is likely that other toxins Probably other enterotoxins are involved. 
the toxin belongs to family of bacterial pyrogen toxin super antigens which are able to stimulate t lymphocyte proliferation in a non antigenic specific manner this results in fever inflammation and shock a similar disease is associated with severe infection with strep pyogenes and may be mediated by reemergent scarlet fever toxin a clinical features onset is acute with fever and rash vomiting and diarrhea involvement of muscle liver kidney and cns circulatory shock is severe and mortality rate is 7% the widespread macular erythema sometimes fade faint and clearing within 3 days is commonest but scarlatini form and papillopustular eruption is also described there is a generalized mucous membrane erythema conjunctival hemorrhage oral esophageal vaginal and bladder mucosal ulceration thrombocytopenia caused purpura discomation is highly characteristic and it occurs 10 to 21 days after the onset and is confined to the fingertip and may be associated with palmer and plantar skin and or may be generalized you can see the um, coating of the tongue and a peeling of skin of both palmar surfaces the diagnosis septic shock and other infection should be excluded by appropriate investigations kawasaki disease is associated with superficial discomation and uh, the disease have features in common but kawasaki disease usually differentiated by prolonged fever by cardiac involvement by generalized lymphadenopathy and absence of peripheral shock staphylococcal scarlatinia may represent a milder case of toxic shock syndrome the first line treatment is hemodynamic resuscitation intravenous clindamycin plus minus benzyl penicillin uh, sodium or vancos vancomycin second line for severe cases considered additional intravenous immunoglobulin dose will be 2 g per kg then 4 uh, days then 4 days with 0.4 g per kg periporitis staphylogenes is secondary infection with staph aureus of malaria It, it's an infection of ostium of the sweat glands and should not be confused with folliculitis or frankulosis and pustular malaria is itself sterile and the pustules are peri follicular and are not centered on hair follicles you can see these um pustular lesions also known as cold folliculitis because they are not hot and tender like the bacterial folliculitis occurs in the summer season and there is background of malaria staphylococcal scarlatin is an scarlatin form rash clinically indistinguished from the streptococcal scarlet fever but without accompanying tonsillitis there is negative schurz charlton test with streptococcal scarlet fever antitoxin staph streptococcal vulvo vaginitis streptococcal pyogenes account for 10% cases of vulvo vaginitis the child complain of genital soreness or irritation and skin is acutely erythematous there may be purulent discharge or dysuria neisseria gonorrhea cannot be distinguished clinically and the infection respond to oral penicillin or erythromycin streptococcal ulcer acute ulcer on leg and feet and most frequent form of streptococcal pyogenes under humid and tropical conditions blistering distal dactylitis seen in children caused by group a strep a large blister contain thin seroprolent fluid form at the distal phalanx usually of a finger and typically on palmar pads organism is cultured from blister fluid and respond to oral antibiotic treatment the uh, blistering distal dactylitis scarlet fever or scarlatina and it's an acute infection caused by strains of 
स्टेप्टोकोकस पायोजीनिस प्रोड्यूसिंग अ पायरोजेनिक एक्सोटॉक्सिन आल्सो नोन एज इरिथ्रोजेनिक टॉक्सिन और इरिथ्रोटॉक्सिन व्हेन एन इंफेक्टेड इंडिविजुअल डेवलप्स स्कार्लेट फीवर और अ सेप्टिक स्टेप्टोकोकल इननेस डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द लेवल ऑफ एंटी टॉक्सिक इम्यूनिटी स्कार्लेट फीवर इज एंडेमिक इन लार्ज टाउन्स बट इंसिडेंस वेरीज ग्रेटली फ्रॉम ईयर टू ईयर इन द लास्ट फ्यू डेकेड्स Scarlet fever is less severe because of the virtual disappearance of type A toxin. The attack with the rash confers permanent specific anti-toxic immunity. The toxin produced by other strains is not neutralized, and second attack, although rare, can occur. Bacterial immunity is temporary, and there is often no permanent protection against the septic manifestation of infection by the same or related strains of Streptococcus. Clinical features: Incubation period is two to five days, and it starts with fever, anorexia, and vomiting. Acute follicular or membranous tonsillitis with painful lymphadenopathy. Infection is entered or uh, infection has entered a wound where there is tenderness and soreness and discharge. Rash on the second day is on upper trunk, which is finely punctate erythema that is linked to a sunburn with goose pimples. it's generalized within a few hours transverse red streaks in the skin fold is due to capillary fragility and known as the pastas line pastias line this is the scarlentini form rash if you feel the rash you can feel the sand paper like appearance of the rash and pastias line are red streaks seen at the flexures this is uh, the typical tongue face is flushed but rarely shows punctate erythema and relative pallor around the mouth after 7 to 10 days rash is succeeded by brainy discoloration in most areas oral mucous membranes are bright red and there may be deeper red puncta on the palate fever settles in 7 to 10 days this is how the strawberry tongue develops in associated with scarlet fever this is initial phase when there is swollen tonsils then white coating of the tongue is seen and later on this coat is removed and the red raw areas uh, with white papules remains and this is called as the strawberry tongue complication the toxic manifestation is myocarditis in most uh, in most cases Separative complications include hepatitis, arthritis, meningitis, and osteomyelitis. At present, the prognosis is good, and mortality of treated cases is less than one percent. Second attack are more frequent in patients in whom early antibiotic control of initial attack has impaired the immune response. Diagnosis is supported by culture of hemolytic streptococci, a rising anti streptolysin o titer and blanching of the rash around the point of injection of anti toxin the charles charlton test the peripheral blood shows polymorphonuclear leukocytosis in so called recurrent scarlentini form erythema repeated attack of somewhat similar rash followed by exfoliation occur without discoverable cause the first line treatment is nisilin ampicillin and cephalosporin first generation second line is erythromycin and chloramphenicol by the way we are treating strep not staph and third line is vancomycin and linzolid the possibility of myo myocardial or renal damage should always be borne in mind and careful and prolonged supervision is obligatory streptococcal toxic shock like syndrome fever myalgia flu like symptoms followed by pain in an extremity or abdomen associated with invasive group a streptococcal infection the rash is followed by discoloration circulatory shock and multi system disease that characterizes the streptococcal toxic shock like syndrome disease may occur in immunocompetent children and adults and it is similar to staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome surgical wounds throat infections vaginal infection postpartum or soft tissue infection due to group a 
स्टेप्टोकोकाई में बी फॉलोड बाय स्टेप्टोकोकल टॉक्सिक शॉक लाइक सिंड्रोम एंड डिजीज एसोसिएटेड विद हाई मोर्टैलिटी कॉम्प्लिकेशन इंक्लूड माओसाइटस एंडो एंड ऑप्थर्माइटस पेरिटोनाइटस एंड रीनल फेलियर blood cultures are frequently positive and swab from the site of clinical infection almost always yield group a streptococcus staphylococcal pyogenic exotoxin a and b are produced in majority of the cases treatment is with penicillin erythromycin clindamycin where necrotic fasciitis or myositis develops debridement fasciotomy and amputation may be required intravenous gamma globulin may be helpful to neutralize the toxins so that's all for today and i hope this lecture was useful for you is useful for you and hope to see you next time with uh, more uh, from the same chapter that is bacterial infection thank you all and have a good day